let's just say we have a trading strategy which has actually a you know a slightly positive uh, probability you know it's not perfectly normally distributed but slightly positive what's going to happen and in order to do that i want to just get rid of this histogram first and maybe we can also get rid of the start and finish for now and so instead of a hundred thousand we just uh, uh do a lot less trajectories again only a hundred and so what we're doing now is we add a small number to the random number so that means that each return we've got a tiny little extra return on top and then we have a look what happens when we do that okay so what we do is we just go uh, here plus and let's just do 0 0.01 yeah so what we do is we add like a little bit of return so what we do is we effectively skew our normal distribution a little bit to the right to the positive yeah mm -hmm. does that make sense so mm -hmm. so each of our expected returns has this little bit of extra return and then what we do is we can just plot uh, k again let's just put a semicolon there now look at this it's actually you know we can't really see anything here so we add a little bit but it's too small an addition to do anything now let's just make it much much larger 0 0.1 and 0 instead of 0 0.01 now look at that mm. so when we now add basically a little bias to our returns so our returns are on average more positive rather than zero then we get this very different behavior here there's actually very few of these paths that that end up crossing the zero line and we just go really of course if we add another order of magnitude to that then we get this really crazy <laughs> upward trajectory but that's like full on <laughs> mm -hmm. so <laughs> that's clearly a bit too much so let's just uh let's just go back and uh and just do something a bit more modest. Let's just see if 0 0.03 is an interesting one. Well, let's, let's do a little bit more. Maybe 0 0.07. So that we can see something. All right. See, see we've got like a slightly positive skew mm -hmm. on our distribution now. Right? Or oh, it's, it's basically, it's just shifted uh, to the right. Now, what we can do now is again, um, instead of plotting these trajectories we're actually plotting the histogram of the of the final values so plt dot his so that's k do you remember what we have to put in here mm, yeah we have to put like minus one for like the the last and then like you normally do 40 yeah yeah 40 40 bins it was yeah, right so we have minus one yeah, yeah 40 minus bins, one but what else have we and then the comma minus one and what else do we put yeah comma and then colon okay yeah, yeah. and 40. so let, let's run this and see what happens all right oh yeah see see we only had a hundred points here <laughs> but we want to go to a hundred thousand otherwise <laughs> we won't get any good um we won't get a good sim so so the, the more simulation samples you do you know the more clean your simulation will actually become and as you can see here look look at this what what does what does that distribution now tell you yeah i mean it's definitely shifted to the right because before it was always kind of around yeah. like zero it's, yeah it's clearly shifted to the right now what we're doing here is actually and this is what we're gonna touch upon later on in this this is actually really really crucial for stuff like pricing derivatives so you may have heard of options contracts and options are somewhat similar to insurance and so you need for example simulations like this to price derivative contracts now, specifically for options and, and the, and the basic type of options called the vanilla option, 
you can actually use uh, a analytical formulation as well, which is called the Black-Scholes formula. But when you code to more complex type of options, for example, they're called exotic options, then um, you can't really do this anymore. At some point, you actually have to use simulations. And what we've done here basically is something called a Monte Carlo simulation. So what we're doing here is when we are looking at these different outcomes and so on, we're actually running what you call Monte Carlo simulations. Yeah, and that's a very fun thing to do as well. And it's a big part and parcel of quantitative finance and Monte Carlo simulations, because we cannot just do this, you know, so trajectories, but we can do a lot more uh, with Monte Carlo. 